Welcome to Highline Excel 2013 video number 17. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 214, week 3, click on the link below the video. In this video, we're going to talk about the sum product function. And we've already seen the sum product function in action back in the video on OR criteria. We saw how the sum product came to the rescue when we did an array operation. Remember, we used the count ifs and sum ifs and gave, made an array operation. The sum function wouldn't add the result of that array operation, but the sum product would. So here we're going to start off with the basics of sum product and how it works, and then we'll come back to that example we saw back in the video on OR at the end of the video. Now here's our situation for our first example. Here's all the different monetary units, $100 bill, $50 bill, $20 bill. And for the day, we got 22 100s, 0 50s, 50 20s, etc. And we need a total bank deposit. Now here's a formula that I wouldn't like to have to do. Oh, wow. It'll get the right answer, but the sum product will do this much more easily. That's a hard formula to type out. But notice that we're doing two things. Here's a row, here's a second row. We're first multiplying. So here we multiply 100 times 22. Then we add the next corresponding elements, 50 times 0. And then we add the next corresponding elements, 20 times 50. Hey we're first multiplying and then adding. Sum product. The name of the function is perfect because that's what sum product does. It will first multiply to ranges or arrays of values and then add. And that's what we want to do. We want to take that whole array of values there and multiply it by this other array and then add. Here you go. Argument array. You highlight the first array. Type a comma, highlight the second array. Now, these two arrays have to be the same dimensions. This is that many columns by one row, and that one's also the same exact size, that many columns by one row. Close parentheses, and you've got to be kidding me. That is so easy. Sum product, highlight two ranges, enter. It does the same exact thing. It first takes the two arrays, multiplies them, and then adds. Let's look at another example down here. This is a grading example. So here we have weights for each test. And here's the student's results. Instead of doing a formula where we, you know, this times this plus this times this plus this times this, perfect use for some product. As long as the two arrays are the same side. Now this one when I copy down has to be locked. Each one of these students we need to use the same weights. So F4, comma, and then I take a relative range there, four cells to my left, close parentheses, control enter. Wow, that is so cool. F2, all of the students test scores, weights, gets the perfect answer. Let's look at another example. So in accounting, sometimes we have to create budgets. And here we have from past accounting data, we, our goal is to calculate the monthly budgeted order quantity. We're estimating from past data. So 10% of the time we ordered in the past, we ordered 700. 20% of the time we ordered 800. All the way down to 15% of the time we ordered 1,100. Now, we want to calculate what's called a weighted average. And there's how you do it. The actual units times the probability. Units times the probability. So we're multiplying and then adding. The two arrays or ranges are exactly the same size. Perfect job for some product. Array 1, comma. Notice it doesn't matter if they're horizontal or vertical or even it could be a whole table as long as they're the same size because what does some product do? It needs to have one of each from each one of the arrays to first multiply and then add. Oh, what's happening there? Number formatting. I can come up here and apply general or I can use the keyboard control shift tilde. Alright, now some product. Very simple. It just takes as many arrays as you want and first multiplies then adds. What we used it for earlier 
is that the sum product has a special capability. If our goal here is to add, oops, I didn't we didn't put all the calls here. So I'm just going to make it up 3, 4, 3, 4, 6, 7, 3. So here's the calls. And we have a team here. And this is the exact calculation we did back in the, the video for OR. I think that was video number 11. And we want to add them. So we want to use some ifs. Some ifs usually does and criteria, and that means you'd have to put, in this case, one, if you had two criteria, you'd have to put two criteria ranges and two criteria, right? But for OR criteria, you just highlight your sum range, and then your criteria range, you highlight at one time. And for OR criteria, you just slap it all into the criteria argument. Because we're given this function argument two values, the sum ifs will spit out two answers, F9. Now we need to add those. And we, as we saw back in video 11, sum isn't automatically programmed to deal with what's called a function argument array operation. That means we give it more than one item, an array of items in there, so sum if spits out an array items. Sum isn't automatically programmed to deal with that. So instead of using sum, you use sum product. Now, we're not using the product part here. We're only putting the result of an array operation into the array one argument, because it can handle just simply adding the result of that array operation. Absolutely beautiful. Now, here's so here we got our 16, which is exactly what we want. Um, so this is what we did back in video 11. We're reminding ourselves that some product can be really nice when you have an array calculation. Here is a preview of what we'll be doing in a couple weeks ahead when we talk about array formulas. We could, if we wanted to calculate the total profit, we have a bunch of transactions with revenue and cost. Well, we could do each one individually. And then add. Instead, we could make notice that, hmm, to this, it looks like almost like this column minus this other column. And then we add it. Well, we could do what's called an array calculation. Now, when we did our function argument array operation, remember um, the argument usually expects a single value we gave it a bunch of values. So of course it spit out a bunch of values. In that case we gave it two, so it spit out two. We can do the same thing with math operators. We can take a whole column and subtract a whole other column. Now think about that. What we usually do, and I'm going to put this formula in suspend mode by putting in a space before the formula, before I show you what it does. Look what we normally do. We normally take, oh, Cell reference, math operator, cell reference. We're always doing one thing, some math operator, some other thing. But this, this is a whole other another animal. This is an array calculation. Anytime you do some operation on more than one item, you're doing an array operation. Go ahead, highlight it, and I'll and then guess before we even evaluate it. Of course, because it's this range minus this range, it's going to give us in the cell each one of these individual calculations. So I can hit F9. That is awesome. Control Z. Well, that's an array calculation. The sum won't automatically handle it, but the sum product will. So in here we're doing, we're kind of using it, uh, well no, we're not kind of using, we're just skipping right over the product part since we only have one array. Notice that's an operation. That's considered one thing. When this calculates, it spits out one array of answers. There's no one of these other arrays in here to start multiplying. But we're only doing the sum part. If I hit Enter, that is so cool. All in a single cell. I didn't have to use this whole column here. All right, sum product. We can do uh, add the result of an array operation, or more commonly, we simply are multiplying and then adding in succession arrays that are the same dimensions or same size. All right, uh, this is the last video for week three. 
we'll see you next week for the next video. All right, see you next video.